Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. An organic gardening program on Maui provides homeless youth with food and self-esteem. It makes me feel proud knowing that my food didn't have to come from overseas. Knowing that for free, I could just pick it, bring it inside, cut it up, throw it in my stir fry and put it on the table. Find out how dogs in Kauai's search and rescue canine team are trained to find missing people. Speaking of Kauai canines, we'll revisit a past story from Kapa'a High School about an adopt-a-dog for a day program. We'll learn how to make a traditional Maori dance implement. And we'll learn about the inner workings of a biomass plant on Kauai. Plus, we'll explore the quirky, imaginative, and liberating world of cosplay. All on this episode of the nation's first statewide student news network, Hikino. Can do! We are here on the campus of Maui High School, home of the Sabres in Kahului, Maui. Maui High School opened its doors in 1913 at Hamakua Poko. At that time, it was the first academic high school on the island with an initial enrollment of 16 students. In 1972, the present Maui High School campus welcomed students on its new Kahului location in Dream City. We now have 12 major buildings, 36 portable classrooms, and several athletic facilities on 75 acres. The following story by Maui High School's Hikino students is about one family who makes the most out of the situation by learning the importance of gardening and sustainability. It's just more, more than just putting flowers in the ground and making your house look pretty. It's gathering food for your family. For 14-year-old Sean Perry, gardening is more than just a hobby. Through his gardening, he brings home like a lot of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables that we either A, wouldn't have the money this week for, or B, wouldn't have the time this week to go pick up. Um, that helps a lot with our budget. In the state with the highest percentage of homelessness in the nation, Sean and his mother are not the only Hawaii residents on a budget. For the Perry family, this hits home. Sometimes. It can drag you down, drain you. Slipping in and out of homelessness since 2006, the Perry family has found themselves in search of a permanent residence from Philadelphia to Florida and finally Maui. When we originally moved over to Maui, we kind of got ripped off for our house and we didn't know any place to run to, so we kind of lost all of our money to a hotel room for about a week and somebody brought us here. Um, ever since then, we've been here. For Sean and his family, the Kahale Akeola Resource Center has served as a temporary home. Melissa Connolly, an agricultural volunteer at the center, aims to reduce the pressures faced by homeless youth like Sean by teaching them how to sustain themselves and become independent through organic gardening. I've seen them um be empowered by being in an atmosphere where they're uh, workers and where they're useful and where they're needed um, and where they're given the opportunity to use tools and to grow food that they can share with the adults in their community. Thanks to the garden program, access to fresh produce is no longer a concern for Sean and his family. For the most part, it's, you know, handing over a pair of scissors and saying, hey, go grab me some green onions, or handing over a garden tool saying, hey, um, you know, dig me up this, or go pluck me some of that. The Kahale Akeola Gardening Program has found fertile soil in homeless youth like Sean. It makes me feel proud knowing that my food didn't have to come from overseas. Um, knowing that for free, I could just pick it, bring it inside, cut it up, throw it in my stir fry, and put it on the table. This is Sydney Dempsey from Maui High School for Hiki No. Hiki No is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki No Can Do. 
Our next story comes from students at Chifas Kamaka Hale Middle School on Kauai who tell of the incredible loyalty and dedication of the dogs in that island's canine search and rescue team. Dogs are often considered man's best friend, but for members of the Kauai Search and Rescue Canine Team, they're absolutely essential to finding missing people on the island of Kauai. Our dogs are so loyal to us that they're always also looking out for us. They'll run ahead at times, but then they'll turn around and check back and see where you're at and see if you're following them. So it's really just both of us working together. Any dog is welcome to become a member of the KSAR team. Mainly, handlers look for the special characteristics in a canine. There's, of course, obvious things that you want to look at. One is curiosity. You want to get that little puppy that is very curious about you. You want ones that, little puppies that are brave, ones that will you throw the ball and they'll bring it back, and um, puppies that love people. Search dogs begin training as puppies. They start off with simple exercises to get comfortable with their handler. Then, they move on to find certain targets. They also train to receive special certifications. The third part is you go find the handler, come back, and then go tell the person that there is a hidden, a, a victim, a subject has been found there. That is the essence of search and rescue. My girl Astro, we started her at eight weeks old training for search and rescue. And we would be out in the yard and trying to find uh, anybody <laughs> that would come by, anybody who would come visit us, we'd say, oh, could you hide for us? And that's just the start of the training. You train every day in your yard, in your backyard. You train on the weekends with the team. The main goal of a rescue mission is to find the missing victim alive. KSAR members and their dogs are prepared for the unexpected and the unfortunate. Some dogs are trained for finding um, HRD, which is uh, human remains. So in, in case we're out on a search and uh, it, it'd be really unfortunate, but if a person had passed away, we don't want our dogs to, um, to run away from that type of smell. So some of our dogs are trained to actually find people that have been deceased. To create a greater chance of a successful mission, the dog handlers build up a special relationship with their dogs to create a feeling of companionship. The dog and the handler is one team, is one unit. The relationship is very close. Our dogs for years have slept on our beds, live in our house. Actually, it's their house, we just pay the mortgage. Always a close relationship between dog and handler makes the team work very well. We've had a find up in uh, a young hunter from Kauai, got away from, from his group early in the morning. We were out two, three o'clock in the morning and he had to go back to a truck. Came back and he got lost for two days. To be able to tell his dad, who was very deep in the Waiali Ali area that we had found his son, to watch his dad just hug his son, I think that was, that's chicken skin. I mean, that's just, there's, there's, there's nothing any better than that. The bonds, training, and commitment among members and rescue dogs reflect one purpose. They are here for the people. This organization, made up of all volunteers and their dogs, work to bring closer to those who are missing their loved ones. This is Brent Torres from Chivas Kamakahele Middle School for Hikino. For more Kauai canines, we turn to the Hikino archives for this Kapa'a High School story about a unique doggy borrowing program on the Garden Isle. Here on the island of Kauai, the Humane Society offers a special treat for locals and visitors. They allow them to take a dog out on a field trip. This unique idea came about unexpectedly from an employee suggestion. The field trip started about two and a half years ago kind of on a lark, if you will. Somebody made an offhand comment about taking a dog out for a day, and it just expanded from there. And over the first six months, we just put a lot of thought into how can we make this work as a program rather than just something somebody does on a whim. After months of planning, they launched the Doggy Field Trips, the first of its kind in the United States. And it was a success. 
I'd never been in a humane society before until we came on vacation here. And uh, we took about four field trip. We took her out in the morning and took her to Mahalapu Beach. She wore an Adopt Me vest. A lot of people paid attention to her. She enjoyed her day out. And when we left here, it was a little emotional, wondering whether or not she was going to be adopted. And she did get adopted. And in that time while we were here on our field trip that day, we met another dog here who had been surrendered. She was seven years old and we adopted her last week. Visitors arrive in the morning, pick up a dog, and take them to a variety of places suggested by the Humane Society, including dog-friendly beaches, bike paths, and hikes. So they get to go out for the day, whether it's the beach, whether it's a hike, they get to get exposed by other visitors, um, as well as themselves. Um, they may be somebody that has a home or that is looking for a dog that has a home that will allow a dog, and they end up getting adopted because they fall in love with them. The doggy field trips have led to an increase in adoptions with an average of two to four more dogs a week finding their forever home. I think it's amazing. I think it's a great thing that they've done. I think it's allowed for so many dogs to be adopted. Visitors are the most frequent users of the field trips and some find themselves with a furry souvenir from their trip to Kauai. Funny, uh, a lot of people that already have dogs, two and three dogs back to the mainland, they come over here, do the doggy field trip, and all of a sudden they're bringing a fourth dog home uh, kind of thing. So it's a great program. With a total of over 200 dogs having been adopted so far, the field trip program is still going strong. This is Samantha Gilbert from Kapa'a High School for Hiki Now. Aloha and welcome to Belima Intermediate, located in Eva Beach on the island of Oahu. One way for our school to express our heritage and values is through our many murals around campus. Students and teachers are working on a beautification campaign to make our school a bright and welcoming environment for all. This year, one of our history teachers is working on a mural on our front office that expresses the culture and history of old Hawaii and the Eva Plains as it would have looked before the school was built. Hikino students in our media class produced the following franchise piece to teach you how to make a traditional Maori item that Alima students still use today. Originating in New Zealand, poi has been part of the Maori culture for hundreds of years. Poi or ball Maori is also known as a taro root. Poi balls have two major parts, the ball and the string. To make your own poi balls, begin by taking three sheets of newspaper and crumple them into a tight ball. Then measure a piece of yarn 35 inches long. Use this piece to measure and cut 15 more sections 35 inches long. You can use the same color of yarn or choose three different colors for your braid. Tie all 15 pieces together into a knot at one end and divide the yarn into three sections of five pieces each. Braid the entire length of yarn and tie a knot when you get to the end. Take one end of the braid and gently push it into the center of the paper ball. Then place a plastic bag over the newspaper ball and secure it tightly around the braid with a rubber band. Cut off the excess plastic bag from the ball. Repeat this process to make a second poi ball. It takes a lot of practice to improve your coordination, but eventually you may be able to dance a traditional Maori poi ball dance. Stay tuned after the show to find out what students who created this franchise piece learned from their experience. We are here on the campus of Island School, home of the Voyagers on the island of Kauai. Island School was created January 24, 1977 by seven founding women. For the first 14 years, Island School was located in the Makea Sugar Company Plantation with a starting number of 12 students. After many years of planning, the board of directors organized the move to their present location in Puhi. Ten acres of land was donated by AMFAC. The new campus opened in 1991 behind Kauai Community College. Today, we own 40 acres of land and have an enrollment of 390 students. Next January, we will be celebrating 40 years. The following story by the Hiki No students at Island School is about sustainable energy on Kauai. You hear that? That's the sound of Kauai's generators not running on a sunny day. That's because clean energy sources are harnessing the power of the sun, water, and trees to power Kauai. There's a lot of reasons that sustainable energy is important for the island of Kauai. You know, at this point in time, it's well recognized that um, greenhouse gas emissions are a real problem for our future, and, and they're something we have to address aggressively. 
At the moment, more than a third of Kauai's overall energy use comes from clean energy. The island's utility cooperative wants to raise that by 50% by 2023, and the state recently committed to generating 100% by 2045. So that's actually a really exciting thing. I think we may be the first state in the country to, to set such a goal, and in fact, the progress is great. A new biomass plant south of Lehue helps our sustainable energy by burning wood chips from invasive species to produce power. All that albizia is grown locally on the islands, and when we switch over to eucalyptus, that eucalyptus will also be grown locally. Now, someone might wonder, well, how is burning a tree environment, environmentally friendly? The trees that we're burning right now are invasive. They shouldn't be here. When we chip them and burn them, we release carbon dioxide, and you would think that's a bad thing. However, we're replanting trees in their place. Experts say a transition to clean energy will not only benefit the state's environment, but also our economy. With fossil fuels, we've seen, you know, year in and year out, a lot of volatility in, in the price of energy, and so it's very difficult for businesses to run. The biomass power plant, in partnership with KIUC, is producing 12% of the island's electrical needs. According to KIUC, the future of Kauai is greener as we continue to lead the nation towards the goal of 100% renewable energy. This is Nico Maioni from Island School for Hiki No. We're here on the campus of Waikia High School in historic Hilo Town on the island of Hawaii. Waikia High School opened in 1976 with a freshman class. The school continued to grow into the 1990s when our student population swelled to over 2,500. Construction continues today with the completion of our sports stadium named after former athletic director Ken Yamase. The following story by the Hikino students at Waiakea High School introduces us to two sisters who have found a way to master shyness by putting on a new face. I'm a very quiet person. I just don't like to talk. But I feel like I just completely change when I go in costume. Some people only dress up for Halloween, but for cosplayers, this type of transformation is simply a part of who they are. I'm suddenly able to go out and talk to people and, you know, maybe act a bit in character or, you know, take pictures with people or help people out with something. I don't know. It's, it's really great that I'm just finally able to just talk to the world. <laughs> Yaikea High School students Kai and Denali Davis have been cosplaying for a few years now. Cosplay or costume play is the act of dressing up as characters from books, movies, TV, video games, or even simple imagination. Dressing up may seem like a simple hobby, but there's a lot more to being a cosplayer. Cosplay has helped us make friends in ways that we didn't really expect. It started off with me and, like, I don't know, three or four friends just like, hey, let's make a costume together. Like, let's coordinate our costumes, right, cool. and this should be fun. And once we did that, we ended up going outside and wearing our costumes in public and we got a lot of weird looks but we ended up making some friends and cosplay has really helped us like break out of our shell. So this is something I've been working on for the upcoming convention and it's just made out of an old, um, the old front of a TV and I got these tubes from the transfer station and I just spray painted them. <laughs> so there's the usual places of getting stuff, you know, the store or uh, what's... The, like Walmart or something. Yeah, Walmart or like Salvation Army, you know, like thrift stores. And then there's like some more unusual places like the recycling center. I've used caulk and I've used an old hiking backpack and totally cut that up just to hold a pair of wings. Yeah, I've, I've used some weird stuff, like half a pound of feathers. <laughs> Aside from one annual convention, there aren't many opportunities to cosplay on the Big Island, but Kai and Denali are hoping to change that. Anyone can cosplay. Like, it's not bound by gender or sexual orientation or, you know, your size. Like, you could be, like, 
12 feet tall or, you know, like 7,000 pounds. They encourage more people to embrace their inner superhero, one costume at a time. This is Puina Levi from Waikea High School for Hiki No. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what students have learned from working on this show. More proof that Hawaii's young people hiki know. Can do. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learn from their Hikino experience. The benefits of working with someone else is you get to like meet them and think like you meet them as the person that they are. This is the first year we, um, our school is participating with Hikino. We all kind of started from scratch. It's my first year as a media teacher and their first year in this type of media classroom, but um, we nicknamed them the Dream Team. On the Ilima Intermediate Story about well, Playballs, I was the cameraman. I was the actor and part of the script making. The director was Shansity and she was also the editor. I said, okay, you know, we're all gonna learn how to work together and get to know each other. You aren't necessarily friends on campus, but that's how teams kind of come together in the professional world. Everyone has their talent that they're bringing to the, to the group project. The benefits of working with someone else is you get to like meet them as the person that they are. Um, Cause before I started working on this video, I didn't really know who Tobias was. Like I knew he was in my class, but I didn't really know, like got to know him. So it was cool getting to meet new people and you get to see how they think about camera shooting and editing and voiceovers and all the things that come with making a video. We each had to rely on each other because each of us gave each other something to build on. So for example, the director, when I made a shot, she would give me tips on how to make it better and I would use that and I would, uh, I would tell the actress how to stand to make the shot even more better. Shantiri did pretty good, because the video turned out great. When we heard that the story was going to be aired, we were all excited. Um, I was especially excited because I never ever done anything that was going to go on live TV. Our dream team, we were like very shocked and happy. And then like we kind of started dancing and stuff because it's the first time like one of our videos from Lima got aired on TV. I told my parents and my family and they're all excited and wanted to know when the air date was so that they could watch it themselves. Working on Hikino projects as a teacher so new in the game has really kind of boosted my confidence to show me that you know I can embrace this new program but it kind of helps keep me anchored because just like with the students, I like having something that I'm working for that's bigger than just my classroom. 
Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.